Hi everyone, I am Bani Subramanian from Informatica Global Customer Support. In this video, I will be briefing you about commit points in Power Center. I hope all of you find a value add at the end of the video. To begin with, agenda for today's video include the below topics transaction control, different types of commit points in Power Center, source based commit, target based commit, and user defined commit. I would also be covering regarding transformation scope of Power Center transformations in this video. The demo showing the working of commit points in Power Center would be available as a separate video in Informatica support channel. Now, let us start by looking into what are database transactions. Database transaction is a set of SQL queries which forms a logical task. Using database transactions, we can bundle multiple database changes to a single atomic operation. That is, either all operations specified in the transaction is executed or none of them are executed. Thus, Commit and rollback are the two pillars of database transactions. Commit writes the changes made by transaction into database and rollback removes temporary changes logged in transaction log by database transaction. To ensure integrity of transaction, database system must follow ACID properties. ACID is the acronym for Atomicity, Consistency, Isolation and Durability. Atomic means all or nothing, that is what database transactions are all about. Consistent means that database has enforced all integrity and, and data constraints on the table so that data stored is just nothing but factual information. Isolation means that the users or database sessions doesn't affect each other. When two sessions goes into transactions, they don't see the results of each other until the data has been committed. Durable means that once data is committed, it will be permanently present in the database. Now, let us go through the classic example of database transaction, ATM machine which we use to withdraw money. If you break the withdrawal operation into individual steps, you will find the steps as below. Step 1. Verify account details or PIN number. Step 2. Accept withdrawal request. Step 3. Check balance. Step 4. Update the balance. And Step 5. Dispense the money. All the above operations form a part of database transaction. We don't want a situation where the balance in our account has been debited but the money is not dispensed due to power failure. Hence, all the statements are executed or none of them are executed. Transaction Control in Power Center Power Center lets you define transactions that the integration service uses to commit and roll back data at the target. In Power Center, a transaction is a set of rows bound by commit or rollback rows, which forms the transaction boundaries. Now the question may arise, why do we need transaction control in Informatica even though it's a database operation? The reason is, until the data is committed in the database, Power Center server holds all uncommitted data in the DTM buffer blocks and we need to control when to commit the data to the target. Also from the Informatica recovery perspective, this is important as we need to process, need not process, already process data within Power Center. We need to know that in Power Center, all the incoming rows from the source need not be bound by transaction boundary. Those rows form an open transaction. You can choose to commit at end of file or to roll back open transaction when you configure the session. But how do we control transactions in Informatica? We control transaction within Informatica by using transaction control points at the mapping level. 
Transaction control points are transformations like transaction control transformation TCT, some active transformations like aggregator, joiner, etc. at the mapping level which can either generate transaction boundaries or can drop incoming transaction boundaries. Also, you can control transactions by using session properties like commit interval, commit interval type, commit at end of file or rollback at the end of file. So, coming to the most important part of the session, what is commit point? Commit point is the point at which we commit data to the target table. Commit point is a factor of commit interval, commit interval type and buffer block size. So, we will go in detail about each and every factor so that we can understand about commit points better. Commit interval is the interval at which the integration service commits data to the targets during a session run. This is a configurable property and its value can be set at the session level or in other words commit interval is the number of rows you want to use as a basis for your commit point. Buffer block size uh, specifies the amount of memory used to move a block of data from the source to the target. Configure the buffer block size on the config object tab in the session properties. Commit interval type on the other hand is the type of rows that you want to use as a basis for the commit point. There are basically three types of commit interval, source based commit, target based commit and user defined commit which we would be covering in the coming slides. Source based commit when you run a source based commit session, the integration service generates commits at all source qualifiers and transformations that do not propagate transaction boundaries. These transactions are called active sources. These active sources form the commit source for each pipeline in the mapping. The integration service generates a commit row from these active sources at every source based commit interval. This includes the following type of active sources, source qualifier, application source qualifier, aggregator with all input transformation scope, joiner, rank, sorter with all input transformation scope, etc. In most of the cases, the number of rows committed to the target will be same as the commit interval. There can be cases where the number of rows are less than the value defined as source based commit interval. So the next question which arises here is, when a mapping has two active sources, which one takes the F effect? The integration service uses the commits generated by the active source that is closest to the target definition. This is known as commit source. Now let us take a look regarding target based commit. During a target based commit session, the integration service commits rows based on the number of target rows and the key constraints on the target table. The commit point depends on commit interval, writer wait timeout and buffer block size. We have already covered regarding commit interval and buffer block size in the previous slides. So to give more details, writer wait timeout is the amount of time the writer waits before it issues a commit. You can configure the writer wait timeout in the integration service properties. When you run a target based commit session, the integration service may issue a commit before, on or after the configured commit interval. The integration service uses the following process to issue commit. When the integration service reaches a commit interval, it continues to fill the writer buffer block. When the writer buffer block fills, the integration service issues the commit. Imagine a scenario when the writer buffer fills before the commit interval. The integration service writes to the target but waits to issue the commit. It will issue the commit in the below cases. When the writer is idle for the amount of time specified at the integration service writer wait timeout option or it will issue a commit when the integration service reaches the commit interval and fills another writer buffer. Now let us take a look regarding user defined commit which is data driven commit. 
During a user-defined commit session, the integration service commits and rollback transactions based on a row or set of rows that passes through TCT transformation, which is transaction control transformation. The integration service evaluates the transaction control expression specified in the TCT transformation for each rows that enters the transformation. The return value of the transaction control expression defines the commit or rollback point. You can choose to commit at the end of file or to roll back that open transaction. Now let us see what is transformation scope of transformation. Tran transformation. You can configure how the integration service applies the transformation logic to incoming data with transformation scope. This is a transformation property. When the integration service processes a transformation, it either drops transaction boundaries or preserves transaction boundaries depending on the transformation scope as well as the session configuration. There are three types of transformation scope, row, transaction and all input. Let us now look in detail regarding each and every transformation scope. When you select row as the transformation scope for a transformation in PowerSender, the integration service applies the transformation logic to one row of data at a time. You need to choose row as a transformation scope when a row of data does not depend on any other row. Now, when you select transaction as a transformation scope for a transformation, the integration service applies the transformation logic to all rows in the transaction. You need to choose transaction as a transformation scope when a row of data depends on all rows in the same transaction but does not depend on rows in other transactions. When you choose transaction, the integration service preserves the incoming transaction boundaries. On the other hand, when you select all, inp all input as the transformation scope, the integration service applies the transformation logic to all incoming data. When you choose all input, the integration service drops the incoming transaction boundaries and outputs all rows from the transformation as an open transaction. Choose all input when a row of data depends on all rows in the source. With this, we have come to the end of the video. You can send or post your queries and feedback at supportvideo at informatica.com or tweet your feedback using the Twitter handle InfaSupport. Thank you. Thank you for your time.